Hello guys, you're welcome to the last video of the series of contract and queues management. In today's video, we're going to be covering uh, how to copy a contract and also go, we're going to uh, go through the uh, possible contract life cycle. And the last of it is going to be how to now associate the contract as in the credit contract to a case. So talking about the contract life cycle, so this is how uh, the life cycle looks like. So the first status is going to be draft, and from that you can it's going to move to being invoiced. Now at this particular state, so what that means is the start date of the contract is still in the future. So once uh, the 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 once the start date has been elapsed, that becomes active. But if the start date is actually in, 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 I mean, it's actually today or in the past, and then you click on invoice, that will move that particular contract, contract from draft straight to being active. And from that, from this particular state, you can either take the contract on hold or, or the contract and also go automatically go on expand if the end date of the contract has elapsed. We can also con cancel the contract. So I'm going to try and show all this. So we have three contracts. So one is, uh, is in draft. So we, uh, we're going to open up the one in draft. And just to illustrate the life cycle, so we are going to invoice that. If we click on invoice contract, because the contract start date is in the past, the current date is 23. Because it's in the past, it's going to take this contract straight away to active. So currently it's drafts, now it says actually active. So in this particular state, we can put the contract on hold. Click on hold contract. So back to, so now when in, in active, so we can put it to hold or it can go on, it can expire. And now we have it on hold. So at this point, there is nothing we can do to it. We can't even associate this contract to a case. We can release the hold, meaning that we're going to take it back to being active. And it's back to active. We can also cancel the contract. Click on cancel. You can see cancellation date to be you can put the cancellation date in the future or you can cancel it right away and the status is now cancelled okay so now we're gonna try to make use of available contract As in the active ones to associate them to a case. So at this point, we're going to create a new case for Farmicam. So we can go to case and click on, let's call it test case. And then customer, we're going to look for Farmicam. We save so at this point we can associate so we're going to associate the contract to this case so we go to the uh, form navigation we go to the articles contract information we go to the contract section and we're going to look out for the contract so you can see the contract we select it it's going to ask for the line we only have one line there so we select line one and we save this now to quickly go back to the contract this is the contract we're trying to make use of so we're going to open this to just show us the allotment remaining we have 49 remaining and this particular contract is based on the contract template which uses number of cases allotment 
So which means if we resolve the case, we just assign our associated to this contract, the allotment remaining will be down by one. So we're going to go to the case and we're going to try to resolve this. Put problem resolved. And put resolve here as well as or any information you want to put there. Now total time is zero minute. This is not needed because the contract that has been associated in this case actually depends on no number of cases allotment time. You can type any review and then we we'll click resolve. Now this case has been resolved. So if we go back to our contract and we will notice this is 49. So if you refresh this, it's gonna change to 48. And you have 48. If, now we're gonna explain how a contract that is based on time allotment type, how it works with case resolution. And we have one here which is contract time contract for G. If we double up this, we realize that the allotment remaining is 20. So what that means is the allotment remaining here is 20 minutes. We're gonna create a case for Jim. So we go to case, create a new one. Let's call this under test case for Jim. to gym then we can just save so at this point we can go ahead to associate this case to the contract select the contract and the single line that is there line one and we save so what we're gonna do now is to now resolve this case. So back to the contract, which is type contract for gym. The allotment remaining is 20. If we resolve this, is and we put something like five minutes, meaning that five minutes was actually used, billable time, five minutes was actually used to resolve this case. Okay, it's problem resolved. Resolved. Click resolve. Now it's resolved. We go back to the contract. Allowment remaining. We refresh this. It should deduct that by five minutes. So it should be down to 15 minutes. And there you go. So the next thing is we'll try to copy a contract. So to copy a contract, you see the copy contract, click on that, and you click create. And that will make a copy of the existing contract. And at this point, if the copied contract is meant for another customer, you can change the customer, you can change the contract name if you want to, you know, for this particular case you need to anyway and if you look at the allotment remaining it's actually using the the allotment that was originally put in at the, at the time when the contract was actually created so that is how copied contract or copy contract works now going back to our contract you can to the original contract Another thing you can do is you can renew a contract. So a renew contract is ideal when a contract expires. But even when it is active, as we have an active one right now that is here to, to expire, when you click on renew, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create another contract. And here we have a new contract in draft which is close to more like copying the contract. This actually brings us to the end of this series of contract and queue management. Thank you very much for watching.
and please watch out for the next video which is going to be on sample questions on what we've covered so far in this series which is about contracts and queues please subscribe to this channel and thank you once again bye bye